Have the worship team come while I get the get the water off my glasses. Praise God. We're gonna go ahead and continue this service. We could end right now, and God would have done a wonderful thing, but we got more in store for this house. I came expecting. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! My God. I want to give my all today. I want to, I want to show you something, church. This is for later, but I want to show you something. I told you that I came. I came here to celebrate. I told you when I bring my, my handkerchief, that means that I'm coming to get down with the Lord. When I bring two handkerchiefs, I'm getting ready to get down. I brought my prayer towel this time. Times of refreshing towel when we was jumping and shouting in God. I'm getting ready to get loose today. I told y'all I was going to bring it. I wasn't lying. Is anybody going to join me? Is anybody going to join me? Yes! Hallelujah! I'm going to need this in a minute. I'm going to need it. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Let's worship. Let's give our all today. In Jesus. I just got to turn it on. That's all, girl. Turn it on.
Oh, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, my King. <laughs> yes, Lord. My God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
<laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I want to be part of a generation that's okay to dance with God. It's okay to shout to God. It's okay to sing to God. It's all right to cry to God. Come on, Jesus. Woo! Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all you do, for all you're going to do, for all you've done. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. Oh, my goodness. What a way to start the day. I'm glad that you are here. Welcome to New Hope Pentecostal Church, where there is hope for the hopeless. Hallelujah. If you have no hope, you're in the right place. Amen. Because of God, if you have hope, you're in the right place to celebrate the hope you have in him. Amen. Either way, you're in the right place. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. There's a couple things I need to say before we move on. Uh, that's still rolling, right, Arturo? That's still rolling. Good. Just leave it going. Leave it going. I want to just thank all the, I've been trying to get into the habit of this, but it's a new thing that I'm trying to do, so I keep forgetting, and we got a lot to do, but today I have remembered 
I want to thank all the web viewers. I know there are people watching that have told me they're watching from different areas. Uh, some of you go on and watch later. This is not live, but they'll hear it. And we're going to say thank you for joining us. Welcome. Uh, we're going to be providing an area online where you'll be able to give. Uh, if you don't have a church, if you don't have a home church, or you just feel a, a burden for this church, we'll have a PayPal account set up for people to give donations online. Uh, because we do have something special here. There's no question in my mind. I come here every week just grateful that we have not just an ordinary church, but we have an extraordinary church. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I also want to, uh, we're going to do some announcements in a minute, but I want to give you some information. Brother was talking about facts last night. And I'm going to give you some more facts. I just gave you a roundabout understanding of where we're at in this church, but I'm going to, I wanted to wait till today because today is the first month of our new year as in terms of how we calculate uh, people getting the Holy Ghost and getting baptized. And so I'm going to give you some stats today because we're starting anew. Kim Yazi, I'm so grateful that you are here to celebrate with us and that you are our first baptism of the, yeah. of the new year for us in terms of when we started our ministry. Praise God. I just want to just let you know that, you know, it was, it was, I was on my way to church today and I was remembering when we first started two years ago in May. I see all these people here and I didn't call any of you this morning to get to church. But I remember when we first started, babe, I had to get on the phone every morning. Or then I start the night before. I start calling. You're coming tomorrow. You're... I had 12 people on my list to call. And we had about 15 that, you know, a group came, you know, Dominic and his group came. And, but we only had a few people come. And I had to call every, every Saturday night and every Sunday. You're coming to church. You're coming to church. I didn't have to call anybody today. Oh. And here you are. That's a blessing. I know that when I get to church, my people are going to be there. But let me tell you something. That wasn't always so, so because that was two years ago. Last year, <laughs> she's laughing. She know what I'm going to say. I get to church, 11.30, have choir practice, 12 o'clock, come around, go pick up some people, 12.30, come around, quarter to one, come around, five to one, come around, and there's maybe three folk people in church. <laughs> and every week I'd wonder, is this the week I'm going to be preaching to one family? <laughs> and I'd start preaching and in faith and prayer. Just listen, we're going to have God's church happen in this town. So we're just going to go through what we got to go through. But sure enough, I, get to, I come next to preaching. And before I get to the end of song service, we got 20, 30 people in church. Every single time I was scared. <laughs> Never had to worry about it because people always came to church. Amen. Praise God. That was one year ago. Now I just come to church ready to have revival and you guys show up and I want to thank you. And I want to tell you how much we love you and appreciate you because we are here because of you. Thank you so much. Give yourselves a hand clap of praise. Praise God. We want to be going forward. We, want to, we don't want to be going backwards. But listen, we did this amongst a church split. And I used to say it wasn't a split, but I guess it kind of was. Some people took a group and they went another direction. And that may not be a bad thing. Maybe that's what needed to happen. We're not putting anybody down. But we went from 40 to 20 overnight. That's scary. There was at least half of our tithe pairs in that half that left. That's really scary. And then we had someone else trying to take a bunch of people out and that failed. But that was a little scary. Hey, you know, people are trying to hurt and, and damage. But I've got a God who's got a hedge of protection around this building, around this ministry, around this woman, around this man, around the faithful saints of God. I got news for you, devil. We're not going anywhere. We are an established church in God of Mexico, and we are going nowhere. We're going to be in your face from now on until Jesus comes. Be on notice, devil. Your time is done. Praise God. Let me go on. I'm just having so much fun. We got a lot to do today, so let me just continue. Praise God. There is something else that I've just, another thing I've been trying to get done. Haven't got it done, and it's not because I didn't want to, but today I said I'm putting it up on my, sh on my screen. This has got to be done. I want to thank so many people. I want to thank, listen, you see, did you smell something different when you came in church this last couple of days? 
I smell pine. I smell Febreze. I smell vacuum cleaner powder, whatever you call that stuff. It smells fresh. I sound like a commercial. Spring fresh in New Hope and Gosford. It smelled good in here. It was clean. It was nice, wasn't it? That's because some people came in and put in extra time. And I want to thank Tiffany, Woo! Melanie, Amy. I mopped that floor back there. But I also want to thank Sister Francis. I just want to thank you so much. You just, you just come all the time. You're here. Just thank those ladies so much. <laughs> Praise God. You don't realize, brother, brother Flannery saw how much I was running around this morning. You don't realize how much a little thing means to a man who's got so much to do. Amen. That is huge. I mean, it's something I just don't have to worry about, and I'm so blessed. I want to thank Sister Susie, Sister Terry. Uh, where's Sister Terry at? Oh, Sister Terry, you usually sit on that side. You mess me up. <laughs> Sister Terry and Sister Melanie, last night for serving. I want to thank uh, Sister Johnson. Listen, Sister, jo Sister Johnson needs some help. She's getting like me now. She's like, this is a lot. I need help. Listen, this woman works, prepares. She's here watching her kids do the practice for black lights, and she's rolling up silverware like she's a server at a restaurant doing her, <laughs> doing her back work. <laughs> right here in the pew. I, I saw it, sister. I want you to recognize that. I want to just thank you. Let's just give sister Thelma. Just thank you, Thelma. Thank you. She's organizing the wonderful meal that we're bringing, that we brought today. And also, I want to thank everybody who, who gives every month when they say I'm going to bring a six-pack, 12-pack of soda, when they say I'm going to bring in sandwiches or bring in uh, desserts, whatever it is that you agree to, spaghetti, sauce, whatever, it wouldn't happen without you. That's right. Me and my wife can't afford to feed 60 people every week, every month. But together we can. Yes. <laughs> I sound like the president. Praise God. Yes. Together we can. Yes. All things are yes. possible with God and we live for him. I can't thank you enough. You are so valuable in this place. Um, praise God. You young people, last night we had a little bit of a disturbance. I almost had to get out the, the rods and the, and the ropes. <laughs> Jesus did it. Got the cord out. I got, I'm good. I'm like Zorro. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't do that, okay? Just web world. I don't whip kids. Not even my own. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, but we do need for the children. We understand that there's no children's church today as well. We understand that you get a little restless. Uh, if there's an adult around, you have uh, the permission to just gently, don't be, be quiet, you know. Uh, but you have the permission to say, hey, you know, keep it down. Uh, it's important for us to be having respect for the minister um, in Jesus' name. Can we do that, young people? Praise God. Praise. Okay. Um, praise God. This, this, this woman's got to go to work, but I told her, listen, it's, it's important. Why don't you come in and get baptized and go to work? She goes, okay, I want some more, God. Thank you so much. We'll see you Sunday. We'll see you Sunday. Praise God. That's the fruit of labor right there. That's the fruit of labor. Listen, what will happen if you go out and ask somebody to need some God? They just might need some of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Don't you assume people are all right. This is a crazy world. And people are hurting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so grateful. It was, wasn't it fun to see her come in the altar and just, Praise listen, we didn't, this woman's not Pentecostal. She's never been to Pentecostal church. And she feels the presence of God just begin to weep. You know why? Because we gave her liberty. Amen. You know why? Because the spirit of God is here. And she felt God's love. And she broke down in the presence of God. I, I give you that same liberty today. Anybody, we're going to have an altar call. We're going to pray on you. We got some oil right here. We're going to anoint some people today in the name of Jesus. Praise God. We have one more week. Are we doing Friday? Not this coming Friday next. Not this Friday, but next Friday we'll have family fun and fellowship on Friday. We'll have pizza or something like that and have some fun. Uh, the church is picking up that bill. Some people help to pitch in and we're going to have a lot of fun playing games, doing some Bible study things, Bible study games. Wednesday is... Um, Bible study for the church. Uh, if you're not coming, you're missing it. You're missing it. We need to learn the Bible if we want to have power. Some of us want to have power. We don't want to do the work. Listen, I'm here to tell you it does take some work. The good thing is that after a while that work becomes fun. Anybody ever have a job they liked? 
you're looking at a preacher who has a job he likes. I love my job. I love this job and I love my other job. But I love to do this and it becomes no longer work. It becomes a pleasure. But there is effort that needs to go out if you want to have that strength in the Lord. Monday we're having prayer. I need some people to raise their hands and say, I'm going to be at prayer on Monday. We need to become a praying church. If we pray together, we'll stay together. Who else? I only got three. So go ahead. That's another one. Uh, who else? Who else? I need at least ten. You and your, you and your fiance. Okay. All the Johns are back there going, I'm coming. I'm, come on. <laughs> We're going to pray some things out of this town. We're going to pray some devils. We're still fasting and praying. We got some evil that needs to be broken up in here. Can I get an amen? amen. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Do you have any announcements, man? Yes, I do. You got a mic? Unless you want to come up here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many of you appreciate your pastor? I know that I do. And um, I just want to say that I'm so thankful to have a pastor that has a vision. Not only he has so many plans for this church, not just the building, but for souls. And I'm so thankful that um, we have a great pastor. Let's give him a hand. You're naughty. Come on. Come on, I appreciate her. Let's go. What do you say in reference to your pastors and See, if that was me, I'd be like, Whoosh. I know. <laughs> the women got it. <laughs> <laughs> so much brother don't you go you better come give me a hug brother I'm a hugger you know me come on come on love you, man. thank you brother love this family so much. brother Flan, I'll give you a hug later don't be scared <laughs> I just want to just say a word before I go on we got one thing before black lights comes before the silent praise comes I want to give you that report but before I give you that report I want you to know that brother Harris is say, <clears throat> saying nice things but understand Three years ago, this preacher was hurting, hurting bad. You know, I never knew a hurt like I had three years ago. And Brother Harris was one of those men I could call because I needed someone to talk to and I needed someone to understand and, and to give me a little comfort. And he was that man. I want you to know I appreciate you. This church might not be here had it not been for a man like Brother Harris. Received this church. We went to three camps already. The first one, he did, didn't even know me. And they said, go up on the platform. I'm like, I'm just here to heal, you know. Uh, but, but now we are a family. Uh, ALJC is the organization we affiliate with. And they bless us with open arms. They receive us. And we're just so grateful for them. We might not be here had it not been for them. Please give them <laughs> praise God. I'm so grateful, brother. I'm so grateful. <laughs> Praise God. Let's talk about what happened after. In the first year, 51 got baptized and 41 got the baptism of the Holy Ghost in this church. First year. <laughs> Praise God. Now, I was afraid for the second year because we lost half our people and a bunch of them were laborers and a bunch of them were, were the ones that were more mature in the church. And I was fearful. Are we going to do that again next year? I have a God of more. Yes. I have a God of increase. Yes. 
This year we baptized 74 and 60 got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In the last two years, 125 people been baptized in Jesus' name and 101 have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. That's God. That's revival. And we're not done yet. <laughs> we're just getting started. We're just getting started. Now that we have the group that we have now that's been built in the last two years, now we can take some laborers and take it to a whole nother level. Take it to a whole nother level. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, are you guys ready back there? Yeah. Praise God. I want you to know that we have a reason to praise and celebrate. God has been good to you. Not only has this church been growing, but you individually have been growing. You have been blessed individually because of God. So we're going to praise. This thing was having fun yesterday. Praise God. I want to give you the freedom to shout. I want to give you the freedom to get into the spirit of God. And to enjoy what he has for us. In Jesus name. If I can kill those lights. Praise God. the lights now. I ain't doing it. I want you to see these wonderful young people. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Come on. They worked hard. Give it to them. Are two, are you ready?
<laughs> oh, praise God, praise God. Has anybody been redeemed in this place? Do I have any redeemed people? Praise God, praise God. Ooh, I love that song, I love that song. If we have any new visitors who don't know what that is, that's called silent praise. We love to praise the Lord. It's not too silent, but uh, their emotions are silent. Praise God. I'm going to take up an offering right now while the kids come down and clear out these uh, uh, lights and stuff. Praise God. I want you to know that we took up a pretty good offering. How much was it, babe, last night? It was over $100 last night. And brother, we usually don't get that in our offering. So people are picking up for you. I want to make sure that we do that again. I want to make it clear that this offering is going to these two men of God to help take care of their expenses, their travel, uh, the gas, the food they've spent. It takes money to come down here. I want you to know that. And the Lord has blessed us to be able to try to you know, get as much as we can uh, to take care of them. We already got the hotel taken care of. We're blessed. Uh, but why don't you extend, stand up right now in presence of the Lord. Go ahead and stand extend your hand out to this offering. I'm a, who believes in prayer? Yes. I believe in prayer. I believe in prayer. So we need to pray for the increase of this offering right now. Jesus, we just thank you for these awesome men of God. We give them honor. We ask that you would give on to this offering. Let it be increased in their hands. Let it be multiplied to them. But we ask, Lord God, that you would bless them for coming and blessing us. We had an awesome service last night. And we're just excited about what's going on right now. Bless this offering to these men. In Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Praise God, Sister Carol, if you'd come up. We're going to go ahead and do an offering march. Uh, why don't you shake someone's hand. Say hello. If you see a new face, make yourself friendly. Praise God. You can go ahead and go to the aisles and come down in the middle. Lord, we give you glory. to the Lord. Praise God. I had a, a plan to go in a certain direction, but I've got to change that direction. I want to make sure that we got plenty of time for my brother to preach. But we got to play one of our choir songs. I'm not going to play both. But we got to play one. It's my favorite. Can I have somebody? Can we just have fun? Can we just have fun in the Lord right now? 
Brother Arturo, I'm going to need you in the back just for the beginning of this. Just to start, I'm going to need you in the back. Pray. All right, now you can have some fun. Come on.
Yeah, I want to hear some show. Yeah. Praise God. We're scaring some demons right now. Praise God. Praise God. Well, well. I think we might be ready for some preaching now. I think we are sufficiently warmed up. Who wants to have the word of God come forth? Who wants the word of God to come forth? I want the word of God today. Brother Flannery, if you would come, brother. Come on up here. Praise God. I'm so excited to have this man. Just, just come up here for a minute. Praise God. Praise God. I like this man. Come on. This man got some fire. Oh, We're going to have some fun right now. We're going to have some fun. Come on. Brother, God give you a liberty. Come on, let's give it to Jesus. Oh, yes. Come on, anybody been born again, let's give it to Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Jesus said it. I said Jesus said it. You know what he said? You know what he said? He said, out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's what Jesus said. It's going to come from you, ladies and gentlemen. If you've been born again, stand on your feet. Clap your hands and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? My, 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 my. Don't turn me loose after a song like that. I got to move some of this stuff around here. There's too much electronic stuff. I'm going to break something. I know by the time I get started, something's going to get broke up here, making me nervous, all this fancy electronic stuff up here. Glory to God. Glory to God. Clap again. Shout again. Lift your voice. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I do believe that I have a word from the Lord. I have heard from the Lord. The Lord's been talking to me for a week or so now. Ever since Brother John Michael called me, I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much, Pastor, for inviting me to be here to minister in this pulpit. Sure did not take it lightly. It's my honor, Sister Amy, thank you so very much. God bless you, Brother John Michael. Sister Amy, we give honor to you. Pastor Harris has already said it. Go ahead, go ahead. Honor your pastor and his wife again. Amen. We appreciate them and love them very much. What a beautiful spirit they have. They have a beautiful heart. Can you say amen? You got a heart for people. You got a heart for souls. You got a beautiful heart. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I, we got to get into the word. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and then Exodus 14. I give honor to Brother Harris. If you'll stand with me, everyone standing all over this building, if you would. You got two legs, two feet. Would you stand to the feet right now? Come on. Come on, come on, come on. You got two feet? Amen. There you go. Thank you very much. Honoring the reading of the word of the Lord. We're so glad Brother Harris came with us. Amen. Didn't he bless us last night? Amen. If you wasn't blessed last night, your, your blessers messed up. If you couldn't receive last night, your receiver is messed up. Isn't it awesome to have a new member of the family? She had to go back to work, but Sister Kim, that's awesome to have a new member of the family. Y'all got to take care of her. Y'all have got to take care of her. Can you say amen? 2 Corinthians 3 and 17, and then we're going to go to Exodus 14. 2 Corinthians 3.17, are you there? Say amen. amen. I want you to read it with me. Now the, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is, liberty. there is liberty. The Amplified says, now the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is emancipation from bondage. There is freedom. freedom. 
Exodus 14. Exodus 14. Genesis, Exodus. Second book of the Bible. Exodus 14. Hands of praise. No, silent praise. Y'all ain't silent. Y'all need to change that name. Y'all ain't silent. Man, y'all get it fired up. Y'all did a beautiful job last night and tonight. Amen. Could you give them a hand right now? Y'all did a fantastic job. Amen. Keep up the good work. That was exciting. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus 14. Are you there? Would you say amen? Let's, we can't read the whole thing. We'll preach about it in a minute. Let's start in verse 13. Verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show, you, show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. For the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Father, we love you. We thank you for your presence that we have felt in this place. We thank you, God. Quicken our hearts and our minds to hear your word this evening, Lord. Hallelujah. Your word is spirit and truth. Let it penetrate right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Give your word free flow tonight in Jesus' name. Make every heart and mind and spirit be captivated right now, Father, by your Holy Spirit to hear what thus saith the Lord in Jesus name everyone said amen. amen if you'll look at three people and tell them go forward the time of your freedom is now come on tell them to go forward the time for your freedom is now the time for your freedom is now can you say amen Clap again unto the Lord, if you'll clap again unto the Lord. My, 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 my. You may be seated. You gonna help me preach, baby? You gonna help me preach, say amen. The children of Israel... In Exodus, we know the story of the children of Israel in bondage in, ex, in uh, uh, Exodus. They've been in bondage for 400 and something years, and God was ready to bring his people out of bondage. Can somebody say amen? amen. So we won't, we won't go into all the detail, but, but God finally heard the cries of his people, and so he began to send, he sent a deliverer to them by the name of Moses. And Moses came down and, and heard the cry of the people. And God, Moses went to Pharaoh and said, it's time to let God's people go. And Pharaoh, of course, said, no, we're not going to let our slaves go. Go. I'm going to tell you something. Somebody that has somebody or something in bondage, uh, they're not too crazy about letting it go. Can y'all hear me out there? Y'all going to help me preach up in here a little bit? So, so Pharaoh said, no, we're not going let to them, let them go. So God began to send plagues, sent nine plagues uh, that didn't work. And then he sent the tenth plague. And the tenth plague, the death of the firstborn, uh, got Pharaoh's attention. Uh, and Pharaoh finally said, I can't stand it no more. you got to get out of here. I'm going to let you go. And so Pharaoh finally uh, let the people of God go. And they began to make their way out of Egypt. Some three, four million of them began to make their way out of Egypt, uh, out of slavery, and out of bondage. And somewhere along the way, all of a sudden, it came to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, why in the world did we let them go? They were our slaves. They were doing things for us that we couldn't get anybody else to do. They were building our houses. They were planting our crops. They were washing our clothes. Man, Pharaoh said, I mean, which one am I supposed to drink. I got three, four, all of them. Okay, this is mine. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Y'all are so generous. I just, thank you. Amen. So Pharaoh said, man, we got to go get them back because uh, they were doing things for me that I can't even get my wife to do for me. So we got to go get the slaves back and bring them back into bondage. And the Bible says that Pharaoh found out where they were going and the way that they went. And Exodus 14 and 3 says that Pharaoh said the wilderness has shut them in. Pharaoh said the wilderness has trapped them. Somebody say, that's what you think. See, Pharaoh uh, realized where they were going and the children of Israel came uh, and all of a sudden in front of them was the Red Sea uh, and to the right of them and to the left of them uh, were mountain and mountains and coming up behind them uh, all of a sudden were about to be uh, uh, the Egyptians. Uh, so Pharaoh said, we know where they are and we know which way they have went uh, and now they are trapped. Uh, we've got them cornered. Somebody say, that's what you think. I'm going to tell you something right now. Now, the devil who is a type of Pharaoh is looking at some of you and he's saying, you are trapped. Oh, somebody say that's what you think. Somebody is with me right now. He's saying he, fear has got you trapped. Come on, that's what you think. Sickness has got you trapped. Come on, depression and discouragement has got you trapped. Oh, come on, your situation right now, your storm, your dilemma, it ain't going to get no better. That's what the enemy is trying to tell you. The confusion that's surrounding you ain't going to get no better. I dare somebody to come on. I dare somebody to say that's what you think. <laughs> oh, you may think you got me trapped, but God is about to turn. I said, God is about to turn my captivity. Give God a shout of praise right now. Give God a shout of praise right now. You may think your storm, you may think your dilemma, you may think your circumstances aren't going to change. I'm, I'm telling you, God gave me this. I wrote this down over the last two or three days. The devil been telling you it ain't going to work out like you think it's going to work out. It ain't going to get no better for you. It's not going to change for you. Somebody needs to say, yeah, that's what you think, big boy. God is fixing to turn my situation around. I'm fixing to come out of this dilemma. I'm fixing to get the victory. Yeah. Woo, see, if the devil can just convince you that you're trapped, did you hear me? If he can convince you that you are trapped, if he can get you to believe in that you are trapped, if he can get you to thinking that you are trapped, then you're going to give in to that mentality of being trapped. You're just going to succumb to it. You're just going to say, K Sarah, Sarah, ain't nothing going to change and ain't nothing going to get better. But I got news for you. Let the redeemed of the Lord. Ain't nobody going to help me up in here but the praise team. Let the redeemed of the Lord, let the redeemed of the Lord say, I'm coming out of this thing. Let the redeemed of the Lord say. See, I like that right there. I like that right there. If the devil's been telling you smack, you need to say so. So I, I, I got to move on a minute. I'm going to get back to that in just a minute. But, but here, here, here they are. So Pharaoh's, Pharaoh, who is a type of the devil, said, said they're trapped. We know where they are. We know where God has led them. Come on. I ain't got time to go there. We know where God has led them, and they are trapped. So we're going to go get them back. So here's the children of Israel. The Red Sea is in front of them. They got mountains on the right and mountains on the left. And all of a sudden, somebody way back there in the back of the row of the three million people turned around at some point. They turned around and they saw dust. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. They saw a dirt cloud. They saw dust arising that the horses and the chariots were making. And somebody back there on the back row way back there seen that dust coming and said, I knew it. 
I knew it. I knew that Moses was going to lead us out here and we was going to die. I knew that Pharaoh wasn't going to let us go and that Moses was going to lead us out here and we was going to die in the wilderness. So they started complaining and they started murmuring. Isn't it something that the person that is the furthest from the leader or the pastor, if you please, is the one that is always griping and complaining and finding. Come on. And, I, and I'm, not, I'm not talking about geographical location furthest from the pastor. You can be sitting right next to the pastor. But if your heart isn't one and your vision isn't one, how can two walk together except they be agreed? Somebody can be sitting right beside the leader and if their heart ain't one, they still find and fall and griping and fussing and murmuring and belly aching and we ain't gonna have revival. Ain't nothing gonna happen. The devil's destroying this church. Somebody needs to say that's what you think. <laughs> Somebody needs to say that's what you think. Ah. So those that are furthest from the leadership, those that are furthest from the ministry, those that are furthest from the pastor, they started griping and complaining. They started bellyaching because they said, here comes Pharaoh. Here comes Pharaoh. We're fixing to all get wiped out. Moses, Moses, Arthur, is that, is that right in English? Arturo, come here to help me, buddy. Y'all gonna let me preach a little while? Come on, preach. Take your time. And that sister over here shout and knock my stick over. <laughs> your fiance knocked my stick over. <laughs> That's not a cane. It's a staff. Hold that staff, Moses, and face them people right there. Don't that, don't he look like a good Moses? Come on. <laughs> I don't know if Moses had the little goatee thing going on. I think Moses probably had it. Way down here, but he, you know, that will, will, it'll pass. That'll pass. He'll, he'll pass for a mo, uh, uh, modern day Moses. Is that right? Is that right? So here comes the children of Israel. They're trapped, or so they think they're trapped. Pharaoh thinks they're trapped, and, and they start crying out to God. They start crying out to Moses and grabbing about to Moses. You fix it. We fixing to die. We fixing to get wiped out. And here we go back to our text. And Moses, the preacher, he stands up and he says unto the people, "Don't do not be afraid. Fear not. Stand still and see the salvation." Yeah, come on, help me right now. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Listen to this. The preacher, Moses, is preaching. See the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more. The Lord shall fight for you. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. glad y'all are shouting right there because that's the same response. I'm glad y'all are shouting right there because that's the same response that we all of us Christians like to give because we don't want to do nothing. We want to stand still and we want to let God fight our battles. Can I preach up in here? There's my coat. If you pull my coattail if you need to. We, we want to stand still and we want to watch God fight our battles. Be seated. Come on, come on. That's what Moses said. That'll preach right there, though, won't it? If you want to stir a crowd up, if you can't get anybody with you when you're preaching, just preach that right there. Stand still. Don't do nothing. God's going to fight for you. And listen to this. And the Lord, verse 15, and the Lord said unto Moses, why are you crying and complaining to me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Not that they stand still, but that they go forward. Amen. Now, now today, this is how it worked out today. Today, we would hear that, and we would hear Moses say, uh, and, uh, or, or, or even us preachers today, God would say, go forward, and we'd be, we'd be saying, Lord, you seen that body of water right there? You see that Red Sea? You dumb or what? How am I supposed to go forward, Lord? I can't go to the right. I can't go to the left. 
Those, that place you just delivered us from is fixing to come and kill us. This is how we talk today. Come on, y'all might as well. Y'all, y'all don't act like I ain't telling the truth. That circumstance I just that you just brought me out of, God, here it comes. It's coming back to kill me. I knew I wasn't going to survive very long. And now here you're telling me to go forward and there's a Red Sea in front of me. How am I supposed to go forward, God? I got to try to figure this out. See, we always want to try to figure it out. We always want to try to rationalize it out. We want to always want to explain away the directions of God. Oh, come on. God said, go forward. God said, tell the people, quit crying to me, quit complaining to me, and go forward. Hey, so verse 16, verse 16, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch. <laughs> Way to go, Moses. He's good. He's good. Listen, listen to the wording of the scripture right here. Lift up thou thy rod over the, and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. Come on, come on. Isn't it? God, God didn't say, Moses, just, just stand there and be quiet. You don't do nothing. Y'all don't do nothing. And I'm going to divide the Red Sea. Come on now. He didn't say that. That's right. He said, Moses, you stretch out your rod. Kind of, kind of point it out there. Makes it feel a little... Yeah, I mean, no, hold right here. Just like that, yeah. There you go. That, look, yeah, over the Red Sea. That's the Red Sea. Moses, you lift out your hand. You, stretch, you, you raise up your arm. You stretch out your hand. And you divide the Red Sea. Ah, that the children of Israel may go, may go across on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Oh, here's what we got to understand. Did God divide the Red Sea? Absolutely. The power came from God. But the conduit to the miracle was right the conduit to the miracle was Moses the power of God the power of God came down it flowed through Moses it flowed through his arm it flowed into that rod and that have electricity hooked up to this building? Do we have electricity hooked up to this building? How do you know? What if we take all the light bulbs out of here? What if all the light bulbs burn out? We take all the light bulbs out of here. You come in here, you start flicking the lights and there ain't nothing happening. You walk outside. You look at the building, yeah, it's hooked up. It's all tied in. Call an electric company. Is my electricity on? Yes, it's on. I, I paid up. My electricity's on. Shows us right here it's on. Then why there ain't nothing working? If the light bulb ain't in place, if the light bulb ain't doing what the light bulb supposed to be doing, ain't no electricity gonna manifest itself in this building. Do you understand what I'm saying? The power comes from God, but you are the light bulb. If you ain't in your place, if you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing, there ain't no power going to be flowing. The source of the power is God, but you are the conduit. Come on, somebody. Woo. God said, God said, Moses, hear him, here's Moses preaching this message. Let's just stand still, y'all. God's going to fight for us. Isn't that cool? Wouldn't it be awesome if we could just go home and lay down on the couch and eat Twinkies all day long and fry bread and watch the game all day long and say, come on, God, fight my battle for me. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to like me before I leave. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if we could just fuss about the mountains on the left and fuss about the hell on the right and fuss about the devils co coming up behind us to kill us and fuss about this stuff that's trying to stand in our way and keep us from progressing. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just fuss and gripe about all that and say, God, do something. God, come on, fight, our fight my battle for me. And God is saying to Moses and the people and the children, why are you griping? Stop griping and start, stop complaining and stop praying to me and lift up your rod. Lift up your rod. Lift it up, Moses. This rod represents your faith. This rod represents your obedience. This rod represents your praise. This rod represents your worship. 
why don't you stop complaining and lift up your obedience, lift up your faith, lift up your praise, lift up your worship. Come on, somebody shout right now. Be seated. They're, they're griping and they are complaining and they are murmuring and they are belly aching. And if they only knew, if they would have remembered the ten plagues, it never touched them. Right. Oh, Lord, I please, Lord, I, ain't, I can't get in trouble. This is my first time. <laughs> the ten plagues never touched them. It never touched the, the Hebrew children. It never touched the children of Israel. It never touched, none of the plagues ever touched them. If they obeyed God and done what God told them to do, they were untouchable by the plagues that were coming against the Egyptians. If they would have just remembered that, they would have realized one thing. When they were standing there facing the Red Sea and they saw the smoke coming behind them, they would have realized that it was never, not one second, not for one millisecond ever, did it ever enter into the mind of God to let Pharaoh come back up after he brought them out to let Pharaoh come back up on them and overtake them again and put them in bondage again that was not the will of God did you hear what I said if they would have just realized the kind of God they were serving, they would have realized it was not God's will for Pharaoh to come back up on them and overtake them again. And that, somebody might as well say it. Somebody needs to say it, and it might as well be me. It is not the will of God. It has never been the will of God. It will never be the will of God. It has never entered in the mind of God after he has brought you out of darkness to let to let the devil come back up on you and let the devil overtake you and let the devil start putting junk back up in your life. When God brought you out, he brought you out. When God set you free, he set you free. It ain't the will of God for the devil to have his way with you. God was so adamant. God was so adamant about keeping Pharaoh off of his people. Woo. You all right, Moses? You, you, you communicating with the reverend here? You okay? All right. You asking the reverend if you're doing a good job? Is that what you're doing? Okay. Oh, you're smiling for the camera. Wait. <laughs> Pretty soon you'll be asking that girl over there if you're doing the right thing. <laughs> if she don't already have you trained right now. Uh -huh, I know, I know, I got one. <laughs> oh, never mind. Another mess. Sorry, turn off that camera. Cut it, cut it. Do not put that on the internet. God was so adamant. He was so adamant about keeping Pharaoh, who represents the devil, off of his people after he had brought them out of bondage, after he had delivered them. God was so adamant about keeping them free that the Bible says that he put a fire. Pastor, he put a fire between the children of Israel and the Egyptians. God put a fire between them. And the Bible literally says that God looked through that fire to, at Pharaoh and the Egyptians. And he said, no, 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 no. This is as far as you can come right here. And you can't come no further. You're not going to get back up on my people. Can I tell you something right now? God, listen to me, listen to me. God is so adamant about keeping the devil off of you that he has put a fire between between you and the devil. It is called the Holy Ghost. It is called the Holy Ghost and fire. God has baptized you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Somebody shout right now. Oh, if you got it, shout about it right now. You got a fire in you that's greater than the fires of hell. You got a fire in you that's greater than anything the devil can throw against you. You just got to use it. 
I said you just got to use it. Clap again and shout again. Jesus said it. The Bible said it. Scripture said it. Jesus said it. You all right, Moses? Scripture said it. Out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Jesus said it, or John said it. John said, he that cometh after me is mightier than I, is greater than I. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Do you realize? Oh, come on, let me recapitulate here just a minute. Do you realize you got fire in your bones right now? If you've been born again, you got fire burning on the inside of you. It ain't the fire of the world. It's the fire of God. Do you think hell can match the fire of God? Not on your life. Not on your life. The devil can't match the fire of God. Not on your life. And where is the fire of God? Somebody say, it's in me. The fire of God is in me. Praise him for it. Shout about it right now. You know what you just need to start doing? You need to burn, baby. That's what you need to do. You just need to burn. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. The devil wouldn't be handling you if you was hot. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear me. I said the devil wouldn't be handling if you if you was hot. Come on now. Put you down. If you was Holy Ghost hot, he wouldn't be wanting to touch you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He wouldn't want to touch Jesus. Y'all pay attention to me. Pastor, we can go take care of the chillings. <laughs> well, should I or should I not? Should I or should I not? I should. De De Devil didn't want to handle Jesus. Y'all didn't hear me. Y'all read your Bible. Devil didn't want to handle Jesus. Legions, legions. Some say 3,000. Some say 6,000 is, is the number of legions. One man was pe possessed with a legion of demons, 6,000. Let's just say three to be on the safe side. Pos possessed with 3,000 devils. You know what that devil did when Jesus came? That de those 3,000 devils ran and fell on their, their, their knees before Jesus and said, please don't be tormenting us now, Jesus. The devils didn't want anything to do with Jesus. The devils didn't want anything to do with the apostle Paul. Paul... I don't know who taught us that the devil could just have his way with us any time that we want to let him have his way with us. Come on, somebody. That that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. He that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. You just got to let him operate like he wants to operate in your life. So here they come. They're coming out of Egypt. Three million. The Red Sea parts. Moses stretches out his rod. Moses stretches. There you go. You're doing good, buddy. Moses stretches out his rod. The Red Sea parts. The Bible says that God blew from his nostrils. I can't do it, but I'm afraid what might come out if I do it. God blew from his nostrils in the Red Sea. The Bible says the Red Sea parted and the waters congealed. That means they became, they became walls of ice on both sides of, of the children of Israel. And as the waters are parting and, and congealing and becoming as great, block, great walls of ice, they are, the, the ground is drying up and they are walking across on dry ground. All three something million of them are walking across on dry ground because when God brings his people out, he really brings them out. Come on somebody. He, 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 don't, do, he don't do anything halfway. I got news for you. When God brings you out, he really brings you out. He don't do anything halfway. If you half in and half out, it ain't his fault. It's your fault. You need to make up your mind. I'm going to get off this fence and I'm going to get all the way in to the kingdom of So here they go. They're walking across. 
And, and you, know, you know they got to be thinking, man, this is the coolest thing I have ever seen. They're walking across on dry ground. There's walls of water on both sides of them. I don't know. if they, Maybe they can see the fish swimming in there or something. Dude, look at that. Maybe they can see the sharks or the whales or whatever's in the Red Sea swimming in there in, in that block of ice uh, that's congealed there so they can get across on dry ground and understand uh, that, the, that Pharaoh is still being blocked by, by fire. He can't get to them yet uh, by fire. But I love God. Don't you love God? I love God. I love, uh, as your pastor would say, I love me some God. Come on, somebody, because God is sitting up there thinking, I'm fixing to mess. I'm fixing to mess with Pharaoh. I'm fixing to mess with my people's enemy. Come on, somebody. I'm fixing to mess with this devil once and for all. God's people, God's people are going across. God's people are getting across to the other side. And all of a sudden, Pharaoh's standing back there. Pharaoh's brought his best. Read the Bible. It says the best that he had, the best horses and the best chariot and the best soldiers he's got are coming after the children of Israel. All of a sudden, God lifts that fire and God says, all right, big boy, let's see what you got. And here comes Pharaoh and the chariots. They're racing down into the Red Sea. They're going after God's people. 